Hey guys, you know what makes for a great day when you buy a new car? But you know what makes for a fantastic day, Tommy? Well, when you get to play with little Blazy. That too, but when you buy a new truck, and we have just now purchased our very first heavy duty diesel, because we have, of course, owned a heavy duty, right, Tommy? Yeah, absolutely. We've had a couple, and then this one is the first brand new truck to come equipped with the diesel engine. Yeah, we had the uh, Ford uh, Super Duty with the 7.3 Godzilla power plant, uh, but now we have a diesel. And of course, that diesel is Cummins uh, because, well, why do we buy Cummins, Tommy? Well, I think you really wanted one. <laughs> I think that pretty much is what it boils down to. But we have this new ranch called Tumbleweed Ranch, and we're going to start building it out. Um, and you have this crazy idea that you want to do it ourselves. So we're going to have to start pulling around some really heavy machinery, which means we need a lot of towing capacity, and that's what the 2500 offers. Yeah, actually, I wanted to buy the least expensive diesel truck in America. And then, of course, for all of you um, diesel truck guys and gals, would have been a tradesman with the Cummins. So a tradesman with the Cummins starts at $43,000, uh, and then if you, um, a tradesman starts at $43,000, and then if you add the Cummins, it's basically a $10,000 upgrade, so you're at 53. But there's a problem, Tommy. Well, the issue is that in this crazy car and truck market, right, uh, that vehicle just doesn't exist um, because, I mean, the dealers would rather spec higher end trucks to make more money. That's the fact of the matter. So we looked and looked and looked. And ultimately, we decided to go up one up from the tradesman to what they call the Bighorn, which I think is pretty cool for a lot of the viewers because it's kind of their volume seller. Uh, and that's what we did. So we got a Bighorn Ram, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's live show. Uh, we got a brand new live setup. Uh, Zach and Alex behind the camera put a ton of time into making it work to let us know how it looked compared to the old camera setup. And if we like it or dislike it. Yeah, and uh, we've got Blazy here joining us today. Thank you, Blazy, for coming and being part of the show. Uh, now, the reason, Tommy, I really tried, and I looked all around the country to get a tradesman. I think Blazy having him here is not a great idea. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you take him off set, and I'll tell him why we, we couldn't get uh, the tradesman with the diesel. First of all, uh, they're all white. Uh, and as much as you know, white is the work truck color, it's very boring on video, so that was a very important issue. We wanted to have a truck that popped. Um, not that silver pops, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then uh, we wanted to have a truck we could also take off-road. Uh, and the problem with the tradesman is you can basically get them in two configurations. You can get the long bed, which is great, but with the uh, crew cab, it ends up being like the biggest truck in the world. Uh, very hard truck to take off-road, even though it has a uh, four by four. Or you can get the Short long bed with the two door, uh, which isn't practical. Uh, so we, you also lose um, with the four door with the long bed. You also lose towing capacity. So this truck, as configured, uh, tows about twenty thousand pounds, which is a boatload. Uh, and you know the, the choice was either get the eight foot bed on a tradesman that would have cost after the dealers put all their stuff in, right? So the dealers add like a snowplow package, off road tires. Uh, in this case got the midnight package, right? And it takes the price from 53 to about 58. This one, as configured, ended up being 68, which is, you know, a lot more than we intended to spend. Yeah, and that's crazy to me, $68,000. And it does have quite a few options, but it's also missing a ton, a ton of stuff. And we'll talk about that in this video. So let me grab the Monroney and we can take a look at what this truck has and what it doesn't have. So 2022 Ram 2500, big horn crew cab, four wheel drive, base price 50, and then with all the options and a $1,700 destination charge, 1,800 bucks, that's pretty steep, 1,800 bucks, brings the total price to $68,840. Now let's talk about some of the options. So first of all, uh, like you mentioned, Dad, it's got the night edition package. Like the midnight group? I do, I actually really like the midnight group. I like the, the black togs, it's not red, Tommy, and I like the, the kind of the raccoon black around the lights. It's a little disappointing that we don't have like LEDs. These are just regular light bulbs, but the downside is also an upside because they're easy to replace and easy to fix. Uh, I also love the fact that, uh, you know, we do have actually a really cool color combination. I think that in a way, this silver with this black looks really sinister. And if you notice, we bought Johnson's Auto Plaza. They took really good care of us. We did not pay over sticker. Uh, 
Uh, in fact, uh, Ram gave us a discount, which is incredible. So obviously, we have a YouTube channel, so that helps a lot. But we did pay, uh, you know, what I felt was a fair price for this. Yeah, it's not an enormous discount, but it was a discount, which was nice of them to give us. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop the hood and talk about the engine. Now, of course, not every Cummins is going to be um, equipped the same, right? So this is, I, I believe, what we call the low output Cummins. And uh, if Andre was around, he'd love to give you more details. Andre is on a press trip driving electric trucks right now. I know, he's up at the Upper Peninsula. So, a youper, th this, I is, this is the 6.7 liter turbo diesel. Now, I think this is 370 850 torque. So, this is not like the 1,000 pound foot monster you get in the 3500. And it doesn't have the ISIN transmission either. So, this is the six speed automatic. And I'm curious to see how that's going to perform in the long run because your plan is to basically tow across country everywhere with this truck. We're going to tow the bejesus out of this truck. Tommy, and in terms of kind of where this falls in the lineup of uh, Ram, uh, you start at the Tradesman, then you go to the Bighorn, then you go to the Laramie, and then you go to the Laramie Limited or the Limited. Uh, so you know it's it's kind of the mid gray truck. When we had our Ford Super Duty, we had the XLT, which was also kind of in the middle, and I, I really like that. I like being in the middle. I think that's uh, a good place to be. And I don't think it's called the low output. I just think it's a Cummins, and there's a high output. I don't think a Cummins is like, hey, you, you got the low output. <laughs> well, it's not the marketing term, probably. But let's be honest, you've got two two different outputs low and high. It's not like this is medium high. Well, maybe high. you got standard and high. Well, standard's another way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> but standard anyway, output. Anyway, I think, you know, with this truck, uh, and I think it's rated about 20,000 pounds, you can actually get into CDL territory because it's combined weight when you're towing, and I think it's over 26,001 pounds where you get into CDL. So potentially, uh, if we load this thing up fully, uh, Andre is going to be able to finally use a CDL. Now, you did get the uh, heavy-duty snowplow group that you didn't want. That was 245. Well, I was worried that it was going to make the ride miserable, but now we've got this idea of actually hooking up a plow to it. So if you're a plow company boss, I can't wink. Can you wink better? You're going to hook up a plow to this? Yeah, yeah. Wink, wink, boss. Come on. If you hear me, give us a plow. We can barely use a shovel. What are we going to do with the We're going to plow. plow. You know how hard we had to work to get that 2CV up uh, to the ranch? We could plow that. Wouldn't that be cool? I want to plow. <laughs> Okay, this I got to see. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, so the plow package, 245, that gives you the transfer case skid, which is nice, and then 220, 220 amp alternator, although it does not have um, a gas tank skid like an oil pan skid, so this is not really the, the true off-road group, although it does have the limited slipper diff, that was 4 It also has the, uh, what is it called, the cold weather group, so that gives you the engine block heater and the grill cover. Well, like I say, we didn't inspect this truck ourselves. We bought it off the lot, and there aren't a lot of trucks on the lot. That's why there isn't, you know, a, a ton of uh, choice in the options that we purchased. But I'm happy with the ones that we did get. Uh, and I got to say, I mean, uh, I think at some point once we get, so the plan is not only to do a lot of towing videos, but to um, actually compare it to a full-size truck. So we also have a Ram 1500 now uh, at the offices that, that Ram lent us. And the most common questions that we get from you guys is this, at one point do I need to go from a full-size truck to a heavy-duty truck, or if you're old school, a half ton to a three-quarter ton, right? Uh, uh, and that's what we're going to try to figure out. So we're going to, we've got this incredible trailer, the Black Series, which isn't extremely heavy, but it's got punches a hole. Uh, the Empire State Building, it's got a really huge frontal end, uh, and we towed with it from uh, California all the way to Colorado with the Tundra. Uh, so we want to compare how that tows compared to this truck, which should be able to like tow like it's nothing. The Tundra did, did work hard. So some other stuff we had, this has the Firestone Terra Force, uh, no, Transforce, sorry, Transforce AT. A big wheel, a 20-inch wheel, of course, blacked out with the black package. Yeah, once we, once we get all of our towing done, I want to go like, 17, if we can find it, 18, and go at least to 35. Tow mirrors here? Yeah. Fold out, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's become a meme, right, on, uh, <laughs> on the internet. Pretty standard. Um, of course, here we have our uh, port for the diesel and the uh, diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, one thing which I think was a kind of a disappointment is like 68 grand, and they don't give you fender liners. I never understood. I mean, this sounds like something right out of 1972. I don't understand why like this kind of thing is still an option. You know, especially in Colorado when we started using that horrible mag chloride, like that's a pretty, pretty yeah, the, big I mean, thing. I mean, it's also, it's old school, right? It's, I caught it, but it's not dampened. It's not very heavy, but nevertheless, it's not dampened. Uh, also, if you look here, no power in the bed, no lights in the bed, uh, and only eight tie downs. That's, I guess, better than four. So you got two here on 
you know, in each of the corners. No bed liner either. No bed liner, but we are going to sort that out as soon as possible. And then fixed rear window, so this does not have any sliding or fold down capability. Uh, so these are kind of some of the things that like you, at least I would expect for $68,000, it would be to have like the bed liner included, the fender liner included, the sliding or window. I think that those should be standard. I get that like the Cummins is a 10 grand option, but I do think as consumers, we should expect more, especially in the HD class. But look there, we did get some pretty cool stuff. Why don't you show them under the under seating? Yep, this was an option. This is a pretty cool thing. So the seats fold up, right, as is pretty standard. But uh, cooler than that is, is a little fold down compartment here, which allows you to have a completely flat floor, which is ideal for your dogs and furry friends. So I always thought that was a really nice touch in the, uh, in the optional in the Rams, which is good. Now this is the cloth seating, but it is the premium cloth seating, which I think was the $250 option, $295 option, something like that. So you get kind of a higher end cloth and it does look quite nice. Yeah, and I do love, if you come up to the front here, I do love the fact that we have actually a leather steering wheel. Uh, so in the Bighorn package, you do get the leather steering wheel. Uh, when we had that XLT Ford, it was plastic, and this is what I touched the most, so I want it to be nice. Uh, interestingly, we get power seats on the driver's side, but manual seats on the passenger side. Lumbar on this side, as far as I know, no lumbar on the passenger side. Uh, we did get a heated steering wheel and heated seats, Tommy, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that was a great option. Uh, full, full. Uh, instrument panel here. Yep, so it's got the big seven inch cluster there, which I think was a, a nice thing to have included on the truck. And it does have the leather wrap steering wheel, which is a good thing. So uh, there are, this is kind of an interesting equipped truck. So I'll hop over to the other side, uh, Alex, if you want to stay over there. And Tommy, do you want to, you want to peel off uh, the screen protector, which is a very satisfying thing to do indeed. Yes. Where did you do with that sticker? Do you have that sticker? Yes, I'll give it to you. Here it is. I want to kind of reference some stuff here. There you go, sir. Sticker. Oh, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. I'll jump back here and just work the light. So on the interior here, a couple of things worth noting. The level A equipment group. So that's the storage bins we just showed you in the back seat, eight-way power front seats, front fog lamps, and the steering wheel mounted audio controls. So uh, where are they at? Oh, on the, 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 the FCA products. Ooh, Stellantis now. Yeah. Stellantis products are behind the steering wheel, and then we have controls on the front, which is good. So that is part of a $2,000 option. And then the seven inch color display, which is the middle display there, that is a heck of a deal. That's only uh, 75 bucks, which is kind of an interesting. And then for 295, we also got the uh, remote start. I love the remote start in Colorado. It's really good, especially with the diesel. So the screen, I love this, right? Ready? This is gonna be your ASMR, it's called, oh. right? Ooh, look at that. Screen protector off. This is the 8.4 inch screen. But better than that, this is the new uh, technology that Rams included. So this is what they call Uconnect 5. So this is the brand new Uconnect system. And I have to say, initial impressions are they really knocked it out of the park with usability. Super easy to use. Um, pretty responsive overall. And I think that the new quality of the screen looks quite good. We also have like the truck pages here. Um, sorry for the beeping. But yeah. lots of stuff we need to learn out and how to play with in this system. Now below that, I actually prefer the system to the 12. I do too, yeah. I think, I think I'm, I'm a big fan of knobs and buttons. So heated seats and steering wheels via hard controls. Yep. Great feature. But look at this. This is one of those things where like I, my head is scratching. So heated seats, heated steering wheel, but you have manual climate controls. I don't mind that actually. <laughs> I don't mind that. For 69 all, grand, the, you don't the, get the, auto climate? The one thing I do mind is if you look where your feet are, uh, there, it, you have less space there because there is like a little bit of a cutout that takes away leg room. It might be I don't a know transmission the tunnel. What's yeah, there's a big there? lump here. There's a big lump. I think that these toggles are quite nice. So exhaust brake, tow haul modes, and then the parking sensors. Integrated brake controllers in a good place. And then for the four-wheel drive controls, too high, four high, four low. And that's it. So there's no locking diff. There's no four-wheel drive auto on this uh, truck. It's just very basic. What, there. what do you think of the... Uh, of the shifter, you like that? The column oh, yeah, shifter? the column shifter is good. I yeah. like it more than the uh, than the the dial and the half tons for sure. And, and you'll note we don't have a sunroof, which I've become a big fan of not having sunroofs in trucks. No sunroof, large uh, center console here. I don't know if here maybe I can improve that lighting system a little bit. So um, leather leather wrapped on the console, and then lift these up, and you've got some additional storage, and then lots of lots of little cubbies, including this is a cool little Easter egg. All the generations of the Ram truck way down there in the bottom. I but, don't know if you can see that. Did you see that? We, we don't have a phone charger integrated. We just have a U, two USB and then two USB-C. USB -C. I actually prefer this. So I think the wireless chargers on the Ram trucks are not, I mean, they're okay, but they're a little finicky. 
USB-C, USB-A, and then another USB in there. So lots of USB ports, which is quite proactive in 2021. And I think the seats are good. So I like leather seats, but these cloth, the premium cloth with the stitching, the contrasting stitching, feels quite nice. And I really like, uh, why don't you show it? It's on the dashboard, the, kind of the plastic that looks like wood or something. It looks like fake granite, maybe. You like the, 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 the faux granite? I do like the faux granite. Um, it is a little bit of a sea of dark in here. You yeah. have to admit, it's, you know, there's not, not much not color. Not a lot of color contrast in here. Yeah, not much color. Yeah. Uh, of course, plenty of room in the back. Now, for all of you uh, truck guys and gals out there, you know that this cab is identical to uh, any uh, full-size truck. So it's not any bigger just because it's a heavy-duty truck doesn't mean you get a bigger cab. You get the same size cab, so you get the same amount of room back here. Uh, but it's very comfortable back here. Tad P gave us five bucks. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, thank you, Tad. Very Tad has a really... Uh, Tad's got a really cool Hummer H1, which is very cool. Uh, Andre is asking questions in the comments. All right, what's Andre asking? He wants to know the payload. All right, let's, let's show him the sticker. So, ooh, 2200. So there you can see the payload, 2,234. And then I think the max towing is right around 20K. So that's what, what was our Tundra? It's, I think our Tundra is 12,000, so about 1,000 pounds more payload. Isn't it 10? Is it 10? I don't know. Andre will know that. Maybe Andre can make Towing, not payload. Oh. 10,000 pounds of towing. Oh, yeah. Not payload. Doesn't want to make that. No, I'm clear. saying I think it's, I think it's interest 1,200 payload. Uh, I could be wrong. A lot of I numbers. don't want to. a numbers guy. We're misstate not. it. Yeah. Anyway, if, he, if Andre comment in the, in the comments and let us know. Uh, so do you guys have any questions that we could answer? Zach, are there any questions people are asking about our new Cummins? I love saying that. Uh, well, one of the chief questions I've seen in the comments is why trade in the Jeep for this? Well, because we needed the money. <laughs> Simple, straightforward answer. <laughs> and uh, for folks asking what it replaced, that's what it replaced. Yeah, the Grand Cherokee. So we had the Grand Cherokee um, WK2 for a couple of months. And then they introduced the WL, of course, which is a new Grand Cherokee. But we still wanted to try the look, old one. Look, the original plan for the Jeep was to, sorry, Jim, <laughs> was to grab the old one. Uh, and then uh, when the new 4xe came along, we were going to trade it in on that. Yeah. But plans changed. We bought a ranch. We needed a truck. And so that's why we end up going with the truck and spending more money. But we needed the money. Here's to, the thing. Yeah. I know you, you, you're justifying this purchase because we needed it for the ranch. Yeah. This is not a ranch truck. It's sixty-eight thousand dollars. A ranch truck is that four thousand dollar F two fifty out there with an eight foot bed, right? I mean, this is a, this is a nice truck. It's a beautiful truck. But you want to get that unpainted bed all scratched up? Well, that's why we're gonna mine it. I, but my point is, like, from the ranchers I've talked to, they're very focused hey, hold, on hold value. On. Hold, hold on, guys. Now, how many of you guys are out there watching Yellowstone? Now, oh, you're gonna do your LA actor? Oh, look at. What is Chris no, Hemsworth has no, a Ram 25. No, Kevin Costner. Oh, Kevin Costner. It's not, oh. not, not driving. Kevin some Costner knows. And, he knows ranches. If there's one guy that knows the ranch ranches. owner is not driving some, you know, some, some, some beat up twenty. Maybe the ranch hands are, but you know, we're not driving that truck. We're driving. You know, and the other problem with like having an old truck, which we've had plenty of, by the way, uh, is that. Nobody cares about testing the payload or the towing on a 20-year-old truck because it's been long established. I, I agree. I think from a testing standpoint, this makes sense. But from like a, we need a truck for the ranch. I really we have a lot of trucks outside, if you haven't noticed. They're all lined up there. I really wanted to get a tradesman. I thought we could do like a, almost you know, a, a swap on a tradesman. But I'm once again on Obtainium today. And Tommy is right. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Uh, anything is a ranch truck if you throw a cowboy hat on it. There you go. Exactly right. Yep. All right, uh, any other questions that we can answer? So Zach? some folks are saying, dang, inflation, this big horn is 68K. I agree. But how much can these trucks get specced up to? I know. You get eliminated in a 3,500 dually. I mean, $60,000 dollars is so much money. You know, I mean, uh, to, grant, to Zach's point, you know, a dually now limited is going to be like 95. Right, you're touching 100K. 100K, yeah. yeah. Look, here's the thing, Tommy. Okay, let's, let's talk about this. I know we're kind of like all swooning at the price of this thing, but let's be real. So you want numbers? Guess how much used vehicles went up year over year? A lot. This time last. Yeah. 42%, guys. 42% for used vehicles. So it's not like, you know, I can go out and spend, you know, 5K or we can go out and spend 5K on some 
ratty ranch truck that, that you envision. You could go do it, but it's probably going to break down on you right away. You're going to have to take it to Toby, and you're going to have to put another 5K uh, into you'd it. You'd be surprised. The GMT 400 Chevys, that one we had, that thing was a monster. That thing would go for another 200K. Hey, hey, I'm not the one who pumped all this money into the economy and started printing money. So all right. it, it, it is what it is. Inflation is through the roof. We have, I'm just very psyched to have a diesel truck. And oh. I think, I think you know, we've never owned a diesel truck. It's a huge hole in our resume. We've been doing this for 12 years and never owned a diesel. We've owned, you know, heavy duty trucks, we've owned Fords. And by the way, if you're wondering why we, because we could have bought a Ford, Super Duty, right? Right. We could have gotten a, a, a Silverado a Duramax, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're wondering why we didn't, stay tuned. That's okay. all I'm going to say. All right. I think stay tuned. I think it's fair. Would you agree, though, for 68 grand, they could give you better headlights than the halogens? I like the little bulbs. They're easy to fix. Halogens are going to cost you 1200 <laughs> when it comes to swap them out. There's something... The I've candle really, lights, the candles I've in the... You're going to be like have, in Roman times with your little torch. Just. Have, have, you, have, you, you know, have you driven an F-250 with the, the, like the current like, like uh, Champs-Élysées light set up on the front of that thing? You cannot drive a current F-250 without blinding the entire world, even on its lowest setting. People will always flash you. This, nobody's going to flash you. I don't know. Dan I'm Atkinson, to... powder keg is going strong even after towing nearly 3,000 miles. And that truck was 900 bucks. There you go. All I'm saying is for ranch work, this is a little glitzy. All right, any other questions that don't have to do with me and Tommy bickering about? N not really, actually. <laughs> about what, uh, what we have going on here. Um, All right, so let, let us, here's my plan for this, and let me know if you guys want to do this. I really want to make this. Does, oh, here we go. Does it have blind spot monitoring for towing? Uh, I don't know. Does it? No, it does not. How do you know? Because it doesn't have blind spot monitoring for not towing. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> does but it maybe it uses the sensors, the parking sensors. No. No? No, because those are, the, on the blind spot trucks, they have a big uh, module oh, yeah. in the yeah. rear light. Yeah. Um, does it have adaptive cruise control? I don't think so. No, it does, does not. No. 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 What other questions? Um, does it have a Cummins? Yes. Does it have is, that, is that the high output engine? No. Does it have 850 pound foot of torque? Yes. Those are the questions that I'm really excited about. Anyway, I want to tow a lot with this vehicle. Uh, we want to take it across country because, look, this is where this thing shines. It's got a 31 gallon tank, uh, which is, you know, pretty big, not huge, but pretty big. Okay. But 31 gallons of diesel. Uh, the truck says it's got a range of 500 miles. I mean, it's going to, you know, it's going to go further than your bladder will, and yeah, certainly further than my true. bladder will. Yeah, no, I agree. So that was one of the reasons, I'm sure, but uh, one of the questions that just popped up is why the diesel and not the 6.4 Hemi? Um, just because of towing capa capability. We wanted to get as much towing as possible. Yep, and then a lot of questions in just case you're just tuning in. This is the um, standard output, as you say, diesel. So this is the 370 horsepower and then the 850 pound-feet of torque. And then this is the six-speed. It does not have the ISIN. Um, so we'll see how that, that holds up. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, like you said, in this market, right, there's just very limited options on, with anything. Uh, we did go to the Johnson Auto Plaza guys, and they've been awesome. Um, one of their policies is they don't charge over MSRP, so even if you want, like, a TRX, right, Johnson's won't charge over MSRP, which is why we keep going back to them, because they're just, like, a super straightforward uh, dealer to work with. Um, but, yeah, I think that this will be a, a cool series. I think we'll definitely do a bunch of towing and see if you should get the 1500 or the 2500. Yeah, so we've got a lot of, I'll, I'll give you, since you guys have taken the time to come on to our live show, I'll give you everything that's coming up in the next, let's say, quarter. We've got a lot of exciting things happening. First and foremost, what we want to do is we want to build out uh, uh, the ranch. So as you know, it's called Tumbleweed Ranch, and we're doing a new video series called Taming Tumbleweed. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is uh, build a road uh, and then uh, build a bigger parking area. So that's going to mean uh, basically getting a bunch of rock, laying down a bunch of rock. And one of the things I want to do is partner with maybe a Denver-based uh, heavy equipment company and go and borrow like a skid steer or a small excavator okay. uh, and then take it to the ranch and do it ourselves. Basically call the quarry, have them dump the rock, and then you know, build it. And it's going to be a nightmare because we've never done it, but we'll figure it out. and It'll be fun on video to figure it out. And so we need a truck to like tow a small excavator. And and, uh, you know, the, the Hemi's just not going to do it. Um, people want to know, does it have a, limit, uh, uh, a locker in the back? It does not, but it does have the optional limited slip diff, so it's got like a clutch-based LSD in the rear. And we'll see how that performs out on the dirt maybe as well. And then the other thing we want to do, uh, once we get the road built, um, we have to actually take down uh, this pen for the cattle that the former rancher had in this place, and we're probably going to use uh, either the truck 
or some of the heavy equipment to do that. So that'll be another chore that the truck will be put into. Uh, and then the big thing that we're going to do, which I can't wait, uh, as soon as possible, as soon as the snow melts, we're gonna be building an off-road course, right? So mm -hmm. we're gonna need to have heavy equipment for that. And we wanna do it ourselves. You know, we could probably pay somebody to do it, but the more interesting thing is, and the, uh, more dangerous, more, da more hazardous. I don't know if you can roll a, a skid steer, but maybe you can't. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll find a way. Uh, so that's, and then in the spring, we want to put up a barn slash uh, studio so that next time the snow comes along, we can film. And all of that is going to need a work truck, and that's why we have this truck. Okay, gotcha. Sorry about the heads being out of the shot. We're trying a new camera setup, so we're, we're trying to make sure all of that is, is people want to know. It's a learning curve. People yeah, want learning. to know how big our uh, ranch is. It's 22 acres. Yeah, there's a guy here. And by the way, coming up this weekend, we have got a really cool video of a guy who brought his truck from Texas to do it on my ride. And we told him that uh, we have 22 acres. And he looked at me and said, that's his uh, valley parking area on his ranch. OK. Funny? Not funny? Uh, sorry, I, I was reading people's comments. <laughs> anyway, um, it's from Rex. 22 acres is pretty tiny when it comes to like Texas size stuff. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I um, think he has 2,000 acres. 342 is not standard, 373 in the diesels. Uh, there you go. Uh, where's Nathan Ben? Haven't seen him in ages. Where's he up to? Uh, he was reviewing the new uh, uh, Tahoe. Z71 Tahoe. So yep. be, be sure to see, see that. Yep. Today, yep. yeah, he's got that. That's coming up on, I think, probably TFL now. And he plans to put a fifth wheel in the back. Yeah, we thought about that. Uh, we might do a fifth wheel. Uh, if you wanted to do a, um, what's the other one? A gooseneck. A gooseneck, then you probably want the eight foot bed. Well, you could probably do it here, though, don't you think? You could, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but It'd once again, the eight foot bed makes for a really long truck. Uh, do you all have a favorite car at the Chicago Auto Show? Yeah, we're going to be talking about that on our podcast if you want uh, to know about what's going on at the Chicago Auto Show. Actually, I don't have a favorite car, but you know, there was a star of the show, Tommy, and guess what it was? Um, the Silverado EV. Yeah, the Silverado yeah. EV was definitely a star of the Chicago Auto Show. Uh, so uh, over at TFL, uh, talk, our podcast, uh, either on TFL Talk or TFL-Studios.com. And when we haven't recorded that, we'll do that tomorrow. We'll, we'll talk about the Chicago Auto Show. Uh, Ron Nelson says Moab for this truck. Yes, definitely Moab. We'll definitely Moab, but you got to go Moab. Okay. Of course. It does have a pretty firm ride. That's the one thing I did notice driving I it. I think it was okay. It's a heavy duty ride. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's firm. It's a little jittery. It's not like TRX Soft, but no, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I think with Moab, I mean, obviously, uh, these 20 inch wheels aren't grand for off-roading, so uh, Alex suggested, and he's right, we go with 18s and maybe go with 35s. I, if I could stuff 37s under there, I would. Do you guys know how, how big of a tire you can stuff into a standard Ram 2500? Um, we got a 999 um, super chat from NICAD. Thanks, buddy. He says, I'm waiting for you guys to put out a best older used midsize SUV podcast on TFL Talk. Right now, it's very difficult to find a good used reliable family hauler. What would you recommend? Used mid-sized SUVs. That Grand Cherokee was very good that we, we just That's traded in. It's a full in. size though, isn't it? Wouldn't that be like a Cherokee, mid-sized? I think like mid-sized technically is, isn't that the size up though? Because it's like Highlander. High Grand Cherokee. Highlander, Grand Cherokee, Volkswagen Atlas, that kind of deal. Explore. You know, Explore. Well, well for me, I mean, you know, I'm a big fan of the Turag, but that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, I think used, um, man, it's, this market is just so hard to find anything. Um, I think that certainly, I mean, the one I think is the Palisade, the Hyundai Palisade is amazing. Yeah. Um, or the, the Kia Telluride, but those are just totally unattainium. I'd probably stick reliable and go, oh, I, uh, the, if you, oh, that's new too. The new Pathfinder is really good. You might be able to. Uh, yeah, you could, if you skip the previous generation and go to the third gen, then you The third gen Pathfinder, Pathfinder like Nathan really had, that was a really good vehicle. Yeah, that's a really good one. That was too. excellent, yeah. yeah. I'd probably go third gen Pathfinder. That's a really good one. Um, you I, will I, need I, a front leveling kit for 35s. Oh, interesting. This is what DJ oh, Underwood easy. said. Yeah, thank you, DJ. That's easy. And then... Uh, Leveling kits are easy. Yeah. Don, uh, Don is a very knowledgeable guy. He actually did a video with us on a power wagon. He said, stick with 35s. The frame barely fits a deflated 35. Okay, there you go. That's there what I go. wanted to know. Thank What's you. What's the color called, Ron? I think this is called billet, right? We wanted kind of the... They have like a bunch of cool reds in that. Don't they have a blue? Yeah, they have a Patriot blue. But, we, but the, they were... And they have a crimson red. Uh, and none of those were available. So yep. we had the choice of three colors, white, this silver, or that, what's that? Granite. Granite, granite. Yeah, granite. and granite. that one is just uh, really, like, 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 completely fades into oblivion. Right, and we, we're doing video, we want Yeah, build silver, you're right. Clear coat, exterior paint. It was a $200 option. Mm-hmm, that's right. Uh, how about Honda Pilot? Very good. Uh, very good vehicle, especially the first gen. I really like the Pilot. 
Um, everyone's saying life gets harder when you go to 37s. Yeah, and that probably takes down your towing too. Well, but there, I, this is a thing I'm kind of conflicted about, right? Like 35s would look probably pretty cool, but isn't this a vehicle that's built for towing? I hauling? said after we do all that. But we're going to be doing a so conf. We it's made, not we, like we're done and then so we're like, guys, all right. <laughs> we made the mistake with the uh, Ford F-250, right, with Godzilla, where we immediately uh, took it up with the king suspension and with the bigger wheels and tires, and it really did kill uh, its usefulness. It made a great off-road, but it killed it as a towing vehicle, right? You're already rolling bigger tires, and we put the camper on it. So I want to, I want, you know, the problem when you start customizing these is, it, while it makes for interesting video, it also makes it uh, un testable because now all of a sudden you're not testing the truck that comes from the factory but the truck that you built and no one really cares about the truck that you built because it's your own truck. Some people are talking about um, the AEV prospector kit. Yeah, that's one of the things I thought about. I would love to turn this into a prospector. Um, if AEV, if you're out there watching this, uh, talk to us. We actually reached out to them last year and we said we wanted to do a prospector uh, but they were at that point not interested. I think the problem quite honestly is, um, first of all, prospectors are expensive right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that's a very expensive, I'm talking tens of thousands, but the bigger problem right now is it's just, uh, they're so busy, everybody wants, wants it that they don't need uh, for us to do a video. They will sell every prospector they can build. Yes. Yeah, you're exactly right. But if you're interested, let's work with us. All right, Tommy, shall we call, okay, before we wrap this up, should we talk about the videos we've got coming up this week? Um, sure. All right, why don't you talk about your EV video, which is pretty exciting. I don't know if the truck people want to hear about that. All right, well, then don't We've got a Prius in it, but if you are interested in knowing the efficiency between gasoline and electric and how much a road trip costs, check out TFL EV. I think the one the that Prius they, and the Cummins people are typically two, two very different ends of the I spectrum. Bet, I think the one that they will be interested in is when we took that uh, Tahoe Z71 off-road. Yeah, that was cool. On, took, Andre did a very cool video with a uh, F550, I think. Uh, a guy, you mentioned a guy came over with an F550. That was a really cool video. We've got a Nissan Titan, old versus new. Um, hopefully this week we'll be able to shoot Bronco versus Wrangler out in the snow because we're getting a snowstorm. So yeah, lots of good stuff. Andre is doing something really cool. He's a Uper? He, uh, is that what it is? Upper Peninsula? Yeah, and there's a company now that's working on doing um, uh, an electric. Uh, electric axle conversions yeah. for full size and HD trucks. So he's up there working with Sli that. Sliding around on ice on, with electric trucks. Which sounds pretty cool because it's like, I think he's driving a 3500 Ram with electric axles in it. So that'll be a very cool video. Cool. Yeah, uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and then, uh, how about on bike, Alex? Anything cool? We've got some Navi coverage coming. Oh, yes. More Navi. Navi. Yeah. Um, and we've got some cool Monkey Navi videos coming too. And we're working on a trail build series. So stay tuned for that on the Trail 70. We got a trail build series, Tommy. So we got a lot of fun stuff coming. Guys, thank you for letting us buy these trucks because without you, uh, we wouldn't be able to uh, afford it. Uh, and we want to let you guys uh, also let us know what you want us to do with this truck. Mm -hmm. if, if you have any suggestions, we read our comments. Uh, I read most of them as many as I can. Uh, and if there's any cool suggestions, let us know either in the live stream or in the comments once this video goes live. Uh, and we'll try to do it. We'll see you next time. Yep, see you next time. Ciao.